Hello everyone, welcome to Enology Studies channel. This is the seventh video about Code d'Or. Thanks to the wine notes of Clive Coates, Master of Wines, Jasper Morris, Master of Wine, and Alan Meadows, Wine Specialist. Bon Romanet Premier Cru are those produced under the strictest condition of the Bon Romanet appellation, from grapes growing officially classified Premier Cru vineyards. The Bon Romanet appellation also covers the vines of La Gie Chesso. Although the village are entirely distinct, the vineyards are grouped closely together. Bon Romanet quality lands means many of the vineyard sites designated Premier Cru could really be Grand Cru if they were located in other villages, and they often are as good as the less esteemed Grand Cru. Market prices, however, reflect this reality, with good Bon Premier Cru bottles seldom costing under $100. However, this compares quite favorably to the village price the Grand Cru's. 58 hectares of Pont Romanet are Premier Cru, and there are 14 of these. Five of them lie just about the Grand Cru, nigh of the same altitude or a little further down to the slope. The classic Pont Romanet Premier Cru wine is considered by many to have the perfect balance of weight, structure, elegance, and longevity. Tasting notes often refer to a combination of a tart red fruit particularly cherries and raspberries, and a darker elements of undergrowth, licorice and smoke, while considered to be among the finer red wines that Burgundy has to offer, they are still far short of their Grand Cru counterparts. With the recent elevation of La Grand Cru to Grand Cru, there are now 14 Premier Cru in Bon Romanet. Which are the best? As far as I'm concerned, there is a first division, Malconsor, Suchot, Brulé, Beaumonts and Croparantou, plus because it's so well made, Claude de Rea, and the rest. Etienne Gribault described Les Suchot as the most aristocratic, the Beaumonts as the most classic, and Le Brulé its face southeast as softer and more voluptuous. Claude de Rea. Claude de Rea is one of the Bon Romanet most famous Premier Cru climates. The triangular vineyard at the bottom of the Côte d'Or slopes is the only Premier Cru monopole in Bon Romanet and has been under the ownership of the Gros family since 1860. Jean Gros retired in 1995 and split the domain between his three children. Michel Gros ran the state since then. Claude Rea is a 2.1 hectares vineyard surrounded by a very tall stone wall. The wall of this triangular parcel bordered the village of Bon Romanet on the east. A monumental portal stand in its middle. A small ancient house marks the north corner next to the town hall square. I like to call the twilight zone between Bon Romanet and Louis Saint George. Claude de Rea doesn't not abut any Grand Cru site. Instead, it shares its border with Le Chomps, vineyard to the west, and some village level land to the east. However, the revered Latache Grand Cru is only around 300 meters away. The Claude de Rea sets on the slope the face very gently towards the southeast. This exposition gives all day sunshine, provides plentiful ripening opportunities in the cool Burgundian climate. The vineyard covers two hectares of land at the very southern end of the Bon Romanet commune, on the border with Nuit Saint George, and usually for the Bon Romanet Premier Cru. Grapes can develop rich varietal characters without losing precious acidity in this mesoclimate, and so Claude de Rea's Premier Cru wines are well balanced and have a high standard. The vineyard soils are made up of a Bayosian limestone, which manifests itself here as stony marl with some clay. This soil profile, along with the slope, ensures excellent drainage. The marl lends a silky character to the tannins of the wine elegance to its perfume, a mild acidity which make it approachable in its youth. However, this impression of easiness is misleading. Thanks to the near-perfect balance of the wine, it can age for 10 to 15 years while retaining its freshness and fruit expression. Also, somewhat roasted ripe, the flavors are precise enough, ranging from red and dark fruit to spice, with some more subtle notes of game interspersed. The wine is not a heavy weight, but has a pure fragrance of Pinot Noir at its most elegant. Cro Parentou 
Bon Romane Cromparantu is a mythical vineyard with a reputation created by the legendary Henri Jager. With a location just above and next to Richbourg, this premier crew is regarded as something very special. Cromparantu is a well-known and highly regarded premier crew vineyard, not only within Bon Romane, but in the whole Côte de region of Burgundy. It joins Clos Saint Jacques in Gebre Chambertin and Les Amoureux in Chambol Moussigny as premier crew that are often invoked in the same conversation as the region's Grand Cru. This is a wine of Grand Cru standard and first division Grand Cru at that. Full, powerful, rich, oaky, and splendidly concentrated. An essence of a wine brutal when young and velvety, mellow and exotic when mature. Following Philoxera and the subsequent economic difficulties, the land had been allowed to return to nature. It was owned by the Camusé family, but they were absentee landlords. Towards the end of the Second World War, Henri Jager, one of the Camusé sharecroppers, was entrusted with developing the vineyard once more. There are three plots on Cropper and Tooth today. The main Meo Camusé on the top end of the vineyard while the Jager family now represent but Emmanuel Rouget on the two plots just above Le Richbourg. It's important to note that Henri Jager was taking care of the viticulture and vinification for the Meo Camusé family on a char cropping basis from the early 1950s until 1987. Some sources indicated that Henri took over the Camusé vineyards just after the Second War. So while he only owned around 70% of Cropper and Two, he was in reality managing a monopole until 1985, where Domé Meo Camusé began to bottle wines under own label, still produced by Jager. So Henri Jager Cropper and Two wines, the last vintage of which was in 2001, are now highly sought after by collectors, commanding thousands of dollars a bottle. The climate soil is thinner than in the vineyards lower on the slope, with a layer of stony clay over a bed of hard limestone. Low fertility and a lack of water in these soils make the crop and two side well suited to viticulture, as it encourages roots to grow deep into fissures in the rock while lessening both vigor and yield. The berries that in the vine direct energy into producing are consequently of a particularly high quality, producing excellent wines. Cropper and two soil was always a problem. A virtually uncultivated terroir with nonetheless as well oriented towards the east, but difficult to work. Henri Ager succeeded in obtaining quintessential Bon Romane from it. The vineyard plot is sloping, stony, the soil is not deep and cool, but modern technology has helped it to its full potential, and the wines now are mini rich world of outstanding quality. Meo Camusé example is close to Grand Cru level in most vintages. Although it rarely has mineral power, it is a rich, highly aromatic liqueur of berry licorice, an earthy chocolate that could be drunk early or aged for decades. Rouget, it's a completely different style, ripe and stylish with silky texture, red berries, spicy and earthy fruit. Le Beaumont. Beaumont, variously written as two words Beaumont, and with or without the prefix O or Le, French nomenclature is consistently inexact. At 11 hectares, Le Beaumont is one of the largest premier cru climates in Bon Romane and in the Cote de Nuit itself. As such, it is a fairly well-known and well-respected premier crew and its wine has a distinctive character. Though it lies up slope and adjacent to HSO and is separate from Richbourg only by the smaller Le Brule, it has a distinct personality on its own. Perhaps due to the size, the premier crew can be inconsistent, but the best wines are elegant with notes of red fruit and spice and accessible early to their ripeness and vibrancy. Le Beaumont's position of the steeper mid slope, the Côte d'Or, gives a slightly different terroir to the vineyards at the bottom. 
Here, the iron-rich limestone soil is shallower and slightly more stony than in the climates to the east. This topsoil lies over a substrata of hard limestone, which, along with the slope of the vineyard, give excellent drainage. The lack of water in the soil forces deep root system, increasing the strength of the vines and leading the good berry growth. This slope also provides a sunny aspect for the vines, and it faces toward the southeast and provides all-day sunshine for ripening. This, along with the cooler winds from the north and west, make for good balance in Le Bon Monde Premier Cru wines. The sunshine helps develop rich flavor, while the winds slow ripening, allowing for the retention of acidity in the grapes. The top wines is definitely made by Young Ribot. It is full of rich fruit, flower and spice, with a smooth game and a strong mineral backbone to keep the wine fresh. With age, the perfume will open to reveal richer, more earthy notes. But this wine will always be precise and have a good mineral age. The raw fans will flavor their outrageously expensive Vaumont, since Vibrant flavors of wine fruit and earthy spicy and herbs make this one of the top Leroy at the Premier Cru level. For less expensive but similarly great wines, Dujac, simplest but minerally and precise Coupe show similar flavors to the others. Dominique Laurent, label Vaumont, comes in both a jam vine and an old vine version. Both are rich and gamey but silky sweet, with a great combination of tannic power and elegant flavor. Domaine Perot Minot also makes their wine from all vines, although it is always labeled as such. Floral elegance combined with richer, more powerful earthy fruit and coffee here. Very firm style are produced by Udelo Noela. Expect very soil-driven flavor and great richness from these wines after the appropriate aging period. Le Brûlé, also the name means broiled in French, it doesn't seem to be literal, as the hill on which the Premier Cru lies is not especially sunny. Slightly more than 11 acres, the Premier Cru covers only territory that is absolutely outstanding for Pinot Noir production. Divided by the road, which goes up to conquer, Le Brûlé marched with the Le Bon Mons on one side, facing southeast, and Richbourg on the other, inclining to the north of the Bon Romane commune. From these schizophrenic origins, there is nevertheless plenty of wine of quality, wine with backbone, richness, and depth, in a particularly masculine sort of way. Le Brûlé have an enviable position in Bon Romane, with a terroir that could easily be mistaken for that of a Grand Cru. Here, on the slopes overlooking Burgundy, the vines benefit from all-day sunshine brought about by the southeastern position, that is tempered by the cooling winds from the west that are funneled through the comb during the ripening period, which slows the development of the grapes. This lengthening of the ripening process ensures the acidity is retained, balancing the grapes' rich, ripe flavors. The thin soil also helps with the development of the high-quality grapes in Le Brûlé. The gravely stony topsoil overlays a bed of a hard limestone, offering excellent drainage throughout the vineyard. This means that the vines can produce high-quality grapes even in wet vintages, as there is no excess water in the soil to cause problems. The dry soils also warm faster during the day, aiding ripening in the vineyard. Notes of ripe dark fruit populate the cuvée of Domaine Bruno Clavelier, and they show great complexity but additional notes of spicy and earth need time to show up. Domaine Leroy makes vines of a completely different style, a hot climate, Pinot Noir roasted, rich flavor of spice, dark chocolate, and dark fruit. Almost a decor-like wine, and totally distinctive. The Meo Camusé often leads the vineyard showing outstanding depth and power in combination with tones of white, red, and dark fruit, plus earthy elements of spice and coffee. The success of this vineyard had put it on par with Malconsor and Suchot. At this level, it is very subjective, but these are generally considered the top three. Le Suchot, 
Tens es another large premier group, the largest in the commune. Le Souchot occupies a flattened egg, sort of mount, between Richbourg, Romanet Saint Vivant, and Machiso, and is the largest of the Bon Romanet premier group. There are just over 13 hectares. This is the most novel of all the first growth. In the best hand, we really do get Grand Cru quality. All of the top Le Souchot are on the level of good wines, such as Chambertin satellites and perhaps even Beaumar. In fact, some of them can even range to the level of Romanes and Vivant or Richbourg in the best years. The wines is full body and less large than Prule, less finely spirit in a racehorse sense than Beaumont, but of great breeding nonetheless. The Souchot terroir is similar to that of HSO, with a gently easterly aspect excellent drainage and marley clay soils. A good view of the morning sun from the vineyard's position of the hill gives the vines plentiful ripening opportunities, while allowing them to find a balance with the cooler winds from the atop of the Côte d'Or. As a result of this interplay between warm sun and cooler winds, rich fruit complexity is developed alongside acidity resulting in well-balanced wine. The limestone dominant soils in the climate are also credited with the quality of Le Souchot Premier Cru wines. This soil consists of a marley clay topsoil over a bed of rough deeper and richer than is found in the climates higher on the slope. This slope allowed for good drainage which stresses vines enough that the vigor is reduced and energy is channeled into the production of high quality berries. The ledger but youthfully, Badward, Domaine Sylvain Catiard, needs age but is promising. Comte Liguet Bel Air make a large, elegant, early drinking wine that contrasts dramatically with their others, usually more darker bone. The Oudelon Nuela is sweet and perfumed but keeps fresh but a powerful smoky minerality. Rich but dry, the Jado is another step up, with super powerful earth driven notes of soil and black fruit but good fresh minerals to keep the wine precise. Dominique Laurent also make a liquorice wine with exotic herbs and well as red and dark fruit packed together into the greatly thick wine. Masson Frédéric Magnia makes a good Neocian example with salt driven red fruit, spice, a coffee, and elegant but dense style that is distinctively Souchot. Lucien Lemoine makes the most elegant wines here, which has sweet but white notes of fruit and spice with a chambord-like texture, and is ready for drinking early. The main Confuron Cotidot makes a more earthy wine with coffee, chocolates and underbrush, supplemented by fruiter notes of raspberry made into a complex but balanced and seamless wine. Its combination of depth and thickness with finesse and class reminds of the even better domain Robert Arnoux, the flagship wine here, which has a knockout perfume of red fruit and spice. To go along with earthier soil and chocolate with fresh minerals and mint to keep it precise. Malconsort. Sometimes called Le Malconsort or O Malconsort, this is one of the top Bon Romanet Premier Cru. Malconsort is the best known and most highly regarded Premier Cru climates in the Bon Romanet appellation of Burgundy. Malconsor is the fast rising star of the Premier Cru in the appellation. The regained fame and glory is due to the large change of ownership and impressive rise in quality among the other existing owners. O Malconsor is located at the southern corner of Bon Romanet Vineyard Belt, along the commune boundary with Nuit Saint George. It is the lowly partner of the superior Latache Grand Cru Climat, which lies a tantalizing short distance away across the narrow Le Godichot vineyard. The terroir here is very similar to the neighboring Latache. All Malconsort lies on the gentle mid slope of the Côte d'Or, giving it a favorably southeast aspect, which provides all day exposure to sunlight. Tempering Burgundy's cool climate. As such, the grapes are in the perfect position to ripen slowly and evenly, giving a good balance between rich flavor, complexity and acidity, something that translates for the wines themselves. The soils that cover all Malconsort 
are also well suited to viticulture. In the upper part of the vineyard, the thin soil is made up of stony clay over a hard limestone base. Further down the slope, this becomes slightly deeper and richer. These limestone base soil are low in nutrients and drain freely, which stress the vines the perfect amount and consequently leads to low vigor and yield. Highly concentrated berries are produced as a result. From Domaine de Montil, there is a similar style, especially in the Cuvée Christian. Example, an earth-driven wine with exotic coffee and chocolate flavor plus waffing acidity minerals and tannic power. To a lesser extent, the basic Montil Malconsor is minerally powerful and soil-driven, but it is more of a seamless, early drinking style. But the, most of the style are even more ripe and elegant. Catiart has recently improved to compete with the Bouchard, although in a completely different style of vibrant, zesty fruit and flowers. This wine is powerful but weightless. As is Dujac, spicy, silky, sweet, but in rich and intense cuvée. Oudelot Nouvelle makes an early drinking style. Also, in inferior vintage, the red fruit and spice need time to harmonize with the tannins. En Orbo, this Premier Cru is one of the three that actually lies in Flaget Chesso, and one of only two that are fully within the boundaries of that village. As such, it is much more obscure than almost any of the Bon Premier Cru. And if the wines are a mini Grand Cru, they are closer to Echeso or Gra Echeso than Richbourg or Romanet. Either way, there are a number of good wines to be found here, although don't expect them to cost less than Bon Premier Cru examples. The stars in the Orbeau is the brilliant Sylvain Catiard, produces such a good wine that their names has become associated with the Premier Cru. Full of vibrant, accessible fruit and earth flavors, it can be drunk early on for its freshness and precision, or age to show even more character. It's actually better than many, if not most, HSOs. Well, that is all. Thank you for watching. See you next week.